Well, good morning, Walsh all. We're here uh, once again with the, uh, the beautiful sound of the gospel, the good news that God has uh, revealed to us that we might come to a knowledge of Him, that we might come to a knowledge of the uh, forgiveness of God and uh, uh, to know eternal life in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ. And so we would urge you, uh, we offer to you a copy of God's Word, extract from the Bible, John's Gospel, offered to you quite freely. Uh, you are simply known only for the taking. You would like one, do feel free uh, to come and ask for one. It is God's Word. It is a great comfort to those who read it believingly, those who read it in faith, and those, of course, who embrace it. It is, uh, believe me, it is a great, great comfort. God has many, much things to say to you in His Word here, uh, words of reconciliation, uh, words of love, of kindness, of grace, of mercy. Oh, my friends, the, the depth, I tell you, you know not the depth of the heart of God's uh, grace, love, and mercy. But of course, in God's Word, you can discover it. In God's Word, you can read and you can learn about it. And perhaps, who knows, I come to a knowledge of God and His forgiveness. If you'd like a copy of God's Word, I see it's offered to you quite freely. You're simply for the asking. This is a place uh, that we uh, come regularly. We hear regularly to bring the gospel, the good news of God's forgiveness to you, that uh, you might come to enjoy what we enjoy, and that is eternal life. That is the knowledge of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ. And we're here too to minister to you should you wish, uh, we're quite happy to uh, talk with you, to deal with any questions that you might have, to seek and try to answer them for you. And we're here to pray for people. This is a place also, not just of preaching, but of prayer. And if you would like somebody to pray for you over any issue, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it be a temporal matter, any distress, any discomfort, sickness, um, anything at all, my friends, as uh, we are bidden to do in God's Word uh, to bring all matters to God in prayer because He is a God who hears and who answers prayer. My colleagues and I are here today because God heard our call, heard our cry when we called upon His name. He heard us, He answered us, and He saved us, and He gave us eternal life. And we are here to testify to these things that you're, that you're, case might be as ours is, to know God's salvation, to know His grace, love, and mercy. So if you'd like a copy of God's Word, do please feel free to come and ask for one. Gladly place into your hands. Madam, 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 you with a pipe in your mouth. Go go and wash your filthy mouth out. Go and get some soap and water and wash your mouth out. Vile, vile language. Get out of here. Get out with you. Womankind speaking like that. Huh? Shameful, wicked. Wicked. So my friends, the gospel, going back to King David, in the Old Testament of the Bible, Psalm 40, huh? Psalm 40, King David, one time king of Israel, you know, he, about, he knew about Jesus, 
He believed about Jesus. He believed in Jesus. Oh, well, well before Jesus came. Well before he was born of the Virgin. Well before he came, lived and died and rose again from the dead. King David trusted in God. He called upon the name of the Lord. Am I what? Am I? I believe in Jesus. So what? Uh, I, 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 I haven't. Uh, I haven't. I haven't. It's a very safe, friends, you know, King David. He knew about Jesus, he believed in him. And of course, because of that, not only he was a righteous man, because righteousness, righteousness you see, the righteousness of God, that is, it comes by faith and faith alone in Christ and Christ alone. No other, no other way by which a man or woman can be reconciled to God. So King David, you see, he would have you, as I say to you, as I've already said, you know, to call upon the name of the Lord. Because the Bible, New Testament says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, shall be saved. King David, he says, listen up, he said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my going. My friend, let me encourage you, as David did, to call upon the name of the Lord, to pray to God. My friends, why should God not hear you when he says in his word, the Bible says that the ravens cry and God hears them. Well, if God hears the cry of ravens, of old crows, my friends, then surely, surely you, a man, a woman made after the image of God, God would more hear your cry. Oh, I bid you, my friends, as God does, oh, that men would pray, oh, that they would always pray, that they would call upon his name, and they would know, oh, they would know this deliverance that came to King David, delivered from a pit of destruction and delivered out of the mighty clay. I waited patiently for the Lord. That is, he cried, he prayed to God, and he waited for God to answer his prayer. You know? He waited patiently upon the Lord, crying out to God that God would deliver him from that mighty clay, from that pit of destruction. How are we doing, gentlemen? Are we born again, are we? Are you sure? Absolutely sure? Good. Glad to hear it. So like I say, friends, the, uh, the cry, you know, for salvation, for deliverance from the pathway of destruction, from the mighty clay, that all men are in by nature. He waited patiently. He prayed and prayed. Some people don't, you know. Or they make prayers to God, but it's just lip service, you know. And because they're not immediately answered, immediately delivered, well, they just give up, you know. But David, he waited patiently. He cried and cried. That's the way to pray, my friend. To give him no rest until he comes to you. To call, 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 and give him no rest until he comes to you. Until no, you know that you've been delivered. Until you know that you've been pardoned. Until you know that you have eternal life in your soul. I waited patiently for the Lord, he said. You see, he had a desire to be saved. 
That is desired, you know, that's the beginning, surely. You know, to be one, to be out in your sin, to desire better, to desire God, to hunger and thirst for God. Well, as you should do, and we should all do, to desire your best good, my friend, is to desire God, is to desire your maker, and to desire to be reconciled to your maker, to desire or to know him to love him and to serve him the very purpose for which you are made that you are put here on planet air oh my friends the desire of your heart the greatest desire of your heart ought to be for god but here's the problem here's the problem my friend you desire the wrong things you know you desire your sin the bible says you know that that men won't come to the light because their deeds are evil you know, because we love our sin, you love the way of wickedness, you love the way that's contrary to God. And if you desire that, my friend, you desire that, well then, you're not going to wait upon the Lord. You're not going to cry out to God, my friend. You must first desire Him. God must change your desires. And maybe, who knows, maybe He'll do that today through the preaching of the Gospel. Bring you to that place. You know, where you, you come to understand that God is gracious, merciful, kind, that he answers the prayers of sinners. Yes, sinners, my friends, vile sinners, the vilest of sinners, he answers their prayers, my friends. And it ought to be your desire that he hear and answer your prayers, that you desire him and not your sin, that you desire him not the things of this world that you desire your maker that you desire his son jesus christ the bread of life my friend not physical bread but the bread of life my friend to partake of him to desire that living water that he's able to give to you oh my friends if you drink of the water that i shall give you says the lord jesus you shall never thirst again. You won't have to keep going back to the public house for more booze to satisfy yourself. Because what Jesus gave you, living water, my friend, that will deeply satisfy you, that will satisfy you in a way that alcohol, drugs of the things of this world can never, can never, never do, my friend. Or oh, what are your desires? Do you desire him, my friend? If you do the slightest desire to have God, to have His Son Jesus Christ, to have the bread of life, to have the water of life, to be saved, to be right with God, if you have the desire, then I bid you, my friends, call upon Him, call upon Him, cry out to Him, insistently, persistently, pray, my friends. I waited patiently on the Lord because King David, he desired the Lord. He desired better things. He desired more than this world could afford. More than the drunkard. More than the, more than the drugs. More, my friends, than the, the filth and scum of this world. He desired better, my friends. He desired life, and he got it, my friends. Right. Righteousness, that, peace and joy, unspeakable and full of glory was the portion no of King good. David's uh, answer to his prayer. Salvation. And he prayed, my friends, expecting, expecting God to answer. You have not because you ask not. God says in his word, you haven't got his salvation. You haven't got eternal life. You haven't got the good news in you. You haven't got that joy unspeakable. You haven't got, my friends, that living water in you. Why? Because you don't ask for it. If you don't ask, you don't get. Ask and it shall be given, says Jesus. I guess that means if you don't ask, you don't get. Seek and ye shall find, he says. If you don't seek, you don't find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Does that mean if you don't knock? 
the door won't be opened up to you. My friends, uh, you have not because you ask not. King David, he prayed, he called upon the name of the Lord, and he called expectantly, expecting God to answer him, expecting God to, to honor his word because well, he says in his word, if you call upon me in the day of trouble, I will answer you. God is always ready. God is always willing, ready, and able to perform his word, to perform those things, my friends, that he has promised in his word. So, my friends, as he says, you have not because you ask not. You say, I haven't got God's salvation. I don't know his forgiveness. I haven't got the hope of eternal life. I haven't got joy in my life. I haven't got these things that you speak about. Oh, maybe because you don't ask. Maybe because you don't pray, you don't call upon the name of the Lord. But whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ask, my friends, but ask expecting God to answer you. Ask expecting God to deliver. Ask, ask my friends, expecting God to forgive you. Ask, my friends, expecting God to make you sober, to take away the desire for the drugs, take away the desire for the drink, Take away the desire, my friends, for the filthiness and uncleanness of this world. Pray to him, call upon him, wait patiently upon the Lord that he might take these wrong desires away from you. But pray expectantly, my friends, that God would indeed deliver you as he promises in his word. <laughs> and pray, my friends, call upon his name hoping hoping my friends hope is that which uh, you know that keeps people going the bible says you know that if a person has no hope you know they give up well they give up in life that's the suicidals you know that's why men and women commit suicide why because they they're out of hope they have no hope hope for the present hope for the future Hope maybe for eternity, but my friends, no hope, no life. Hopelessness takes the life out of people. Where there is hope, there is life. And my friends, if you put your hope in God, that's a hope that does not disappoint, cannot disappoint, my friends. That's a concrete hope. That's a sure hope. That's hoping in what God has promised. And, and, and it's the God who does not lie, cannot lie who makes these promises to hope in him, to hope in his promises, is to call, is to wait patiently upon him that he might fulfill your hope. That you might hope, my friend, that he might hope that he would come to you, hope that he would deliver you from the pathway, from the pit of destruction, and from the mighty clay, that he might, might get you out of that pathway and into the pathway of righteousness, holiness, into the pathway of salvation, deliverance, my friends. It comes from the Lord, the name of the Lord. But you must pray, and you must pray earnestly, my friends. No good just being lip service to God. You got to mean business. You got to be serious about this, you know. It's got to be earnest, fervently calling upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved, he says. Earnestly, business, my friend, with the same earnestness with which you go after your sin, with the same earnestness with which you go after your wickedness, your ways contrary to God. Oh, oh, my friend, were you to seek him as David did, earnestly seeking the Lord, meaning business, wanting the business to be done, wanting deliverance from the path of destruction, from the pit of despair, from the mighty clay. Oh, my friends, that he would hear you as he heard King David. He hears, he answers prayers, he, he answers those who call upon his name. He has promised, vouched, 
You are warned to call upon his name. You are warned to pray unto him, my friends. For he has promised, he has vouched his word that he will hear and answer you. But it must be earnest, my friends. You must mean business with God, to get right with God, to get out of the way of destruction, and to get out of the miry clay of sin. But King David was heard, and you shall be heard. If, my friends, like David, like he, you call upon the name of the Lord. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined me, and he heard me. He heard his cry, my friend. Again, he hears the cry of the ravens, the Bible says. How much more will he hear your cry in your distress, in your sickness, in your pain, in your sin? Whatever, my friend, whatever life, whatever this world, whatever Satan, the God of this age, has cast upon you, deliverance, all oh, deliverance, salvation is to be found in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You can only come to Him through Jesus Christ. He's the only mediator between God and man. My friends, no other name under heaven will God accept you, only the name of His only begotten and beloved Son, no other name. Cannot go to God in the name of the hammock. Cannot go to God in the name of the Pope, the local priest, or anybody else. Jesus, that name and that name only will God hear and answer your prayers through Jesus Christ, the mediator, the one who came and lived and died rose again from the dead, my friends, in order that we might have a suitable mediator, one able to bring us to God and to bring our prayers to God and make our prayers acceptable to God because they are only acceptable through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who died for sinners, take their sin away and reconcile them to God. So I bid you, my friends, wait, and wait patiently upon the Lord. Cry unto Him with expectancy, with hope, with earnestness. And who knows, but maybe God deliver you from the pit, the pit of destruction and the mighty clay. Here you are today, mired, mired in the clay of original sin conceived in your mother's womb in sin, uh, conceived in sin, born in sin, come into the world shaping in iniquity, says David. Uh, formed, shaped in sin, my friend. How you come into the world shaped as a sinner, living in sin and dying in sin, but for the grace and the deliverance of God. Oh, the mighty clay of your original sin, my friend. Your sin nature. Who can get himself out of it? Nobody, I tell you. Not themselves. Not by your strength. Not by your power. For you have no strength. You have no power. Totally, completely impotent, my friend. That's how you come into the world. All of us. And there's only one person who can get you out of the mighty clay of that Never sin nature. Jesus, the Son Never of God. That's what he came for. Christ Never Jesus came in Never to the world to save sinners. Christ Jesus died on the cross to save sinners. That should you call upon his name. That's what he came for, for sinners. That's what he came for, my friends, men and women, mired. Mired, I tell you, in the clay of their original sin, conceived and born and living in sin, impotent, powerless against the God of this age, powerless against the ravages of sin in your life, in your heart, in your very nature. It's in the vitals of your being. It's in your DNA. You cannot do anything but sin until Jesus, until King Jesus breaks the power of the sin 
until he takes you out of the miry clay, until he takes you from the pit of destruction. You're in a pit, my friend, and you can't get out of it. It's too deep, way, way too deep for you. Oh, no, somebody must come down into that pit and lift you out of it, my friend. But that's what Jesus came for. That's what he came for, my friends, that men and women might be born again. That their natures might be changed, that is. Because except a man be born again, he cannot see, perceive that is the kingdom of God. Understand the kingdom of God until, until Jesus enlightens them. Until by the Spirit of God that nature's change. You remain in that pit of destruction. You remain in the mighty clay of your original sin, of your sin nature. Only Jesus can change you. Only God can change that nature. Religion won't do that for you. Habit won't do that for you. Pope won't do that for you. Only Jesus, only the Son of God. He came with power, my friend. His gospel, his good news. The power of God unto salvation. Power of God, the dynamite of God, my friend. To blow you out of those sin natures and give you a new nature. Give you a nature after God. A partaker in the divine nature, my friend. Through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And why you must call upon him. Because the pit's too deep, my friend. The destruction's too great. Only Jesus can mend you. And only Jesus, he alone, can get you out of that pit, out of that mighty clay of your original sin. Mired, mired in the filthy practices of sin, my friend. Because out of that sin nature, what comes out of the sin nature? Well, nothing but sin. That's why you do the things that you do that you ought not to do. You know that you ought not to do them, but still you do them. Why? Because you cannot help yourself. It's your nature. You do it quite naturally. How can you, how can you who are evil, how can you possibly do good, says God? With you, this is impossible. This would take a miracle. The miracle of God's salvation. The power of God, my friends, to change a man or woman, a human being, and get them out of the mire of their sin. Get them out of the pit of destruction that they've gotten themselves into by their sin. Show me what drunkard ever ever overcame their drunken by their own power and strength. You can't even you can't even say no to the booze. You can't even say no to the demon alcohol. You can't say no to the drugs. You can't say no to the immorality. You can't say no to the filth, the fornication, the sodomy. You can't say no to any of your sin. You're mired. You're mired in it. You're in a pit of destruction, a pit of sin. And only Jesus. Only the Son of, only the mighty Son of God can get you out of it. And why you must wait patiently on the Lord. Why you must call upon his name. Because whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from their sin. Delivered from that mighty clay. Lifted out of that pit of destruction by the grace of God in the Son of God. Jesus Christ, the wonderful, glorious Son of God. My friends, who's a Savior, saves to the uttermost, I tell you, the uttermost of your drunken, the uttermost of your drugs, the uttermost of your false religion, the uttermost, my friends, of your blasphemy, the uttermost of your idolatry, the uttermost, my friends, of your destructive ways. Oh, he's able, more than able. But are you able, are you willing, desiring to call upon his name that you might be saved? 
Save from your dead religion even. Your apostate religion, damnable religion that fills your town today. Save from it and brought to eternal life in the name of the Lord Jesus. Salvation. Salvation, my friends. Call upon his name today. Mired, my friends, in the overwhelming depths of your sin. The endless war that goes on, my friends, in every generation today and will do till the end of the age. The war that goes on between evil and good, between sin and God, between Satan, the enemy, arch enemy of God, my friend. Ah, oh, enmity in the heart of the sinner, at war with God in your heart, not subject to the law of God, nor can you be. Why? Because, my friend, because you're mired in sin, because you're mired in a sinful nature, because you're mired in sinful practices. My friend, hostile in your heart against God, at enmity against God, at war with God, my friend. Only one person bring an end. Bring an end to this warfare. Bring peace, but the terms of peace, my friends, have been set by God. By God, God alone, my friends, has set the terms. His terms, not yours. He's God. He's the maker of heaven and earth and everything in it. He's the sovereign Lord God who controls everything by his providence. My friends, he sets the terms, not you. And the terms are set, my friends. Faith in his son, Jesus Christ, the gift of God, my friend. Eternal life through Jesus Christ. Sent into the world for that reason, that purpose. To die, my friends, appointed and anointed of God for this, this very purpose, my friends, that sinners might be gotten out of the mire of sin, might be gotten out of the pit of destruction. But only he, my friends, only he can bring an end to this warfare and bring peace to you. Peace with God, my friends. Through his term, surrender, yielding yourself to King Jesus, raising the white flag of surrender, and yielding yourself to the mighty Son of God, that you might be, my friend, or oh, that you might be reconciled to God. An end of the warfare, an end of the fight, my friend. My friend, at peace with God. And knowing the peace of God that passes all understanding. Oh, I tell you the wonderful. To know peace with God. To know that your sins are forgiven. To know that you're reconciled. To, God, to know that God no longer has any issues with you. To know that you are justified freely. Made right with God freely. By faith in the Son of God. To know that in that grace you stand all because of the grace of God. All because of the grace of God. The free grace of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift, the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Call upon Him today. Wait patiently upon the Lord. Expectantly, He sent His Son for this reason, this purpose, that men, that sinners, like you might be saved, might be brought to Jesus Christ, might call upon his name and be saved. Oh, call today, don't delay. Call upon the name of the Lord. Too, too deep, my friends, the mire. Too deep for you to extract yourself. The pit of destruction, my friends, is deep, deep, deep. It's bottomless, my friends. You never get yourself out of it. Can't get yourself out by your own strength, your own power. Can't get yourself out by means of trying to be good. Might as well try and pull yourself up by your bootlaces. Can't get yourself out by means of being religious, going to church, saying prayers, 
You know? You know, like the beats and stuff, you know? No, no, my friends, it's calling. It's calling, it's crying unto the Lord expectantly, earnestly, seriously, desiring, desiring to be brought out of the pit of destruction, desiring to be brought out of the mighty clay, and calling upon the name of the Lord, and waiting upon Him, giving Him no rest, my friends, until He comes to you, until He saves you, until you know that you have eternal life in your soul. Call upon Him today, sir, today. Make, make no delay. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and He set my feet upon a rock, He said. That rock is Christ Jesus, the Son of God. He's a rock, my friend. You either stand upon him in faith, trusting in God's rock, Jesus, or, my friends, you stumble over him in rejecting him, and you fall into an even deeper pit, the pit of the darkness of hell. But, my friends, if you call seriously, expectantly, earnestly upon the name of the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, God's rock, my friends, trusting, trusting yourself to Jesus emphatically, implicitly, trusting in no other, trusting in Him and what He has accomplished, His dying, His rising from the dead, trusting in Jesus, God's rock of salvation, the rock of ages, the rock that never shall be and cannot be moved. My friends, you are on safe territory. You're on safe ground. He cannot be moved. And if you're standing upon Him by faith, you cannot be moved either. Oh, the rock He placed, He put my feet upon the rock, says King David, and established my going, set my feet upon the rock Christ Jesus. If you're set upon Him, my friends, you're good to go. If you're set upon Him, you're immovable, untouchable. None can harm you. Trusting in the Redeemer's finished work, His dying is rising. As He was dying upon that cross, He cried, It is finished. It is finished. It was all done, my friends. Everything necessary for the sinner's salvation. To escape the mighty clay. To escape the pit of destruction. It was all done. All completed. It is finished, says Jesus. He says so. Nothing else needed. Nothing else necessary. Nothing to be added to. Not your good works or anything else, my friends. Only the Redeemer's finished work, His death on the cross, His atoning death, His atoning sacrifice, dying on the cross for sinners. Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for sinners. This is the Gospel. This is the good news. Call upon the name of the Lord the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Salvation, my friends, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. A sure foundation, my friends. A sure foundation because Jesus is the rock that God has set, that God has appointed for salvation, that everybody who trusts in His Son, who trusts whose feet are set upon the rock, my friends, they are on a sure foundation because it's God's foundation. But if any man, any man says God, build another foundation, the foundation of Rome, the foundation of Mecca, the foundation, my That's friends, of the, the Watchtower Society, if any man, any man formed 
seek to build another foundation, they shall be destroyed, my friends, to the uttermost, to the uttermost. One sure foundation, God's rock, God's son, God's appointed savior, Jesus Christ. He set my feet upon a rock, says King David. That rock was Jesus Christ. And you trust in him. You get him for a foundation. You get him under your feet, my friends. You get him into your heart. You cannot be shifted. You cannot be moved. Not in time, not in eternity. No sin can move you. No devil can shift you. None. None can overcome you. The mighty, mighty Son of God. A sure foundation. He said King David's feet upon a rock. He elevated him. He lifted him out of the pit of destruction, sir. He lifted him out of the mighty clay. And he set his feet up on a rock. He lifted him up. He elevated him. And the Bible says, don't you know, you know, that those who are cast down, the poor, the broken hearted, the downtrodden, in this world, not many noble, not many wise, not the prudent, my friend, but the poor, broken sinners of this world. It's them that God hears. It's them that God answers. It's God. It's them that God brings out of the pit of destruction, out of the mighty clay, and elevates them, my friend. Elevates them to the status of children of God, no longer children of wrath, no longer children of the devil, children of God, elevated my friends, their feet set, placed upon a rock, the everlasting rock, the everlasting rock, the everlasting foundation, my friends, of the everlasting love of God of the eternal life, my friend, the eternal, everlasting favor of God, undeserved favor of God, all because of the grace and of the kindness of God, my friends, in providing us with such a one as Jesus, came, my friends, to save, came to deliver us from the pit of destruction, from the mighty clay to lift us out of it, my friend, the swamp of evil of this present world, that, my friends, you might be elevated, that you might be lifted up, my friends, in good season. Humble yourself for now under the mighty hand of God, and he will lift you up. He'll elevate you. He'll raise you up, my friend. If you will but trust, if you will but call upon the name, if you will but wait patiently on the Lord, seeking him earnestly, seriously, expectantly, hopefully. Because, my friends, King David, an adulterer and a murderer, cried to God and God heard him and God answered him and God delivered him. And God elevated him. And God made him a child of God. And if you will but, my friends, persistently and consistently wait upon the Lord. Cry out to God. Give him no rest. Plead for his mercy, for his grace, for his forgiveness. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou uh, you shall be saved. Oh, oh, my friends, today, today Jesus calls you, calls you to himself. Call unto me, he said. Come by prayer and supplication. Come unto me, he said. Call upon me in the day of trouble. Are you in distress? Is it sickness? Is it the virus? Anything. Afflictions are many. 
in this world and in this life. Call upon the name of the Lord. He hears and he answers prayer. Call today. Do not delay, my friend. Jesus bids you. Repent, he says, and believe the gospel. Believe and you shall be saved. Promise. The command with the promise. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Ah, oh, all oh my friends today, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart, as many, many have done in the past and do today. Yield, surrender, in the way of repentance, in the way of faith, believing, come to Jesus. Come to him with all your troubles, all your ills, all your pains, all your sicknesses. All your bondage. Come to him, my friend. Come to him. Call upon his name today. Repent ye and believe the gospel, for the kingdom of God is at hand. You'd like to have a copy of God's word. Recheck these things out for yourself. See the manner of people who came to Jesus and put their trust in him and got their feet set upon a rock who got delivered from the pit of destruction who got delivered from the mighty clay read for yourself meditate upon God's word get some comfort into you get some consolation into you it's the word of God the promise of God's salvation you want somebody to pray for you? Gladly, gladly do that. Questions? Come. We will seek, try to answer your questions as best we can. Having got all the answers. But we do believe we have the right answers for the best questions. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You'd like a copy of God's Word? Come and ask for one. Gladly place into your hand. Freely, no cost, no obligation to you. Or somebody pray for you. Gladly do that too. Come and talk with us. May God bless you. Bless you also. And of mercy, mercy upon your precious, precious, never dying souls.